I like to think of Shakti Berman's work as an art of confluence. And I use the word confluence to mean the coming together of different traditions, different ways of making art, different forms of culture. The confluence or the sangam is the point where different rivers meet and merge. In Shakti's imagination, Greek and Hindu mythology, the art of the Renaissance and the art of Kaligharth, the art of Nathadwara and the work of modernists like Dubuffet or Picasso or Matisse, all of these come together. So when you look at a painting or a drawing by Shakti Berman, you are turned into a time traveler. You cross horizons in time. You are simultaneously in the Renaissance, in Kaligharth, in Vrindavan, and in the landscape of Western Europe. So when you look at any one of his paintings, such as the ones that are behind me on this key wall of the exhibition, you will find that the Kali or the Durga image is in fact drawn from the pageants or the popular cultural images of Bengal, which of course is where he grew up. But you will also find that he draws on the mask, which is a medieval and later a Renaissance form of festivity, which involved choreography. It involved the coming together of a diverse group of people into a framed composition of figures. When you look around this first chapter of the exhibition, A Confluential Imagination, you will also find that Shakti has, in different parts of his life, drawn on a very rich body of iconography, both Indian and European. And in fact, when, you, when we use these terms, like Indian and European, we suggest that they are binaries. But if you look at the life of the artist, you will find that Shakti became richly aware of his Indian past only when he was away in Europe. So in the mid-1960s, when Shakti and his wife, the artist Maite Deltel, the, who is French, when they came back together to visit his family and when they traveled through India, Shakti began to look at his own country through his wife's eyes with a sense of discovery, with a sense of newness. This is when they traveled to Puri, to Konark, to Ajanta, Elora, Elephanta, and to Khajuraho. And in each case, in each of these places, Shakti made notes in his sketchbook. He's had a lifetime's practice of constantly sketching wherever he is. And that becomes the everyday practice of the artist. Out of this comes a lifelong vocabulary of images of sculpture that you find in his drawings, that you find in his paintings. And there are references constantly to Yakshis, to Shalabhanjikas, to Bodhisattvas, to the dream of Maya, which is an episode in the story of the Buddha. And it's through the circulation of these myths, which in Shakti's work are rich, real, and contemporary, that you learn that, in fact, we are all continuous living archives who contain within ourselves the stories of thousands and thousands of years. So it's a big mistake Shakti's work teaches us to imagine that there is modernity and there is antiquity. What there really is, is a very complex negotiation between now and yesterday and 1,000 years ago. Nothing is ever lost or wasted for the true artist. The resources of every period, every culture, every continent are available to the artist whose mind is open.